And this is why I shoot Fujifilm. What's up guys, welcome back to NTLP. My name is Nick and this is the place to be for everything landscape photography. So story time today, we're, uh, we're taking a little, a little bit of a deep dive, you could say, into why I'm shooting with the Fujifilm ecosystem for, for stills and all my YouTube videos. All right, so I should probably make, uh, make this crystal clear. I'm not being paid to make this video by Fujifilm. I'm just uh, a Fujifilm fanboy, I guess you could say. So I, I just decided to make this video to let you know of why I made the switch from my old camera system to now my beloved Fujifilm system. So I thought it would be a good idea to give you a little bit of a backstory of what made us jump over to, to Fujifilm. So my wife and I, we run our own wedding photography and videography business here in Alberta. And for many years, we were shooting Nikon uh, for stills and for, for video. And uh, we, we felt it was time to make a switch to the mirrorless system. We, we were using nothing but DSLRs as wedding photographers and I'm sure everybody else who owns a DSLR and if you're wearing uh, a DSLR on your, your shoulders or your neck for an extended period of time, like in weddings, uh, where you could be shooting the wedding for eight to 10 hours or longer, your back hurts. <laughs> so. Oh, what's wrong with you? Oh, it's my back, it's killing me. Yeah, I'm not falling for that hot oil massage bit again. And that coupled with the lack of video capabilities with DSLRs at the time, we thought it was necessary to to make the jump to to mirrorless. So we had a few options to to choose from. One was Nikon, one was Canon, and the other was Fuji. We've used Canon and Canon before. They are great. Fantastic cameras. I believe at the time R5 and the R6 from Canon uh, came out. We went down to our local camera shop and we, we kind of held it. We kind of took a few photos with it. And I don't know, it, for me and for my wife, it, it just didn't really feel right, I guess you could say. So our next option was, well, because we had a whole bunch of Nikon glass, maybe try to stick within the Nikon ecosystem and the Z6 and the Z7 did come out. However, what really drew us away from that was the first iteration of the Z6 and the Z7 only came with one card slot. And uh, that was kind of a, a very, a, that was a deciding factor for us. While shooting a wedding for, uh, especially for photography, without having that option to have a sequential backup from one card slot to another was a deal breaker for us. So unfortunately, Nikon missed the, the mark on their first iteration of the Z6 and the Z7. Now the Z6, Two and the Z7 II, they do have dual card slots. So I guess they kind of heard everybody's voice and uh, they took notes and somehow got another card slot in there, which should have been there since day one. So sorry, Nikon. And then finally, our third option at the time was, uh, was Fujifilm. And uh, we took a look at the X-T3 and uh, the X-T30, and we made the decision, okay, let's, uh, let's try the X-T30 first. So we, we bought the X-T30, and it was uh, being used as a, a secondary camera at first, and it quickly became my main go-to camera for wedding videography. And then my, D, uh, my D500 became my backup. So we used the X-T30 along with our Nikon gear at the time and we just fell in love with it. It was light, it was fast, it was easy to use, and it could keep up with both photo and video. So that just kind of solidified our our mindset going forward. Okay, yeah, Fuji system or Fu the Fujifilm ecosystem of cameras is our way forward here. So we've completely made the switch from Nikon to Fujifilm. That's the that's the whole backstory so far. So other than uh, Nikon missing the mark and us not really being comfortable with the Canon systems, 
these are the other main key factors of why we switched to Fujifilm. First up is size and weight. Like I said before, the X-T3 and the X-T30 are super compact. They're they're very lightweight and their their form factor is uh, is decent, even with these big mitts that I have. <laughs> uh, the X-T3 is uh, 132.5 millimeters by 92.8 millimeters by 58.8 millimeters and weighs in at a whopping 539 grams. The X-T30, on the other hand, is a bit smaller. It's, uh, I guess, the baby brother to the X-T3. That one, uh, the X-T30, comes in at 118 millimeters by 83 millimeters by 47 millimeters and weighs in at a whopping 383 grams. Our second main key factor in all this, I guess you could say, is what, or was the usability. Fujifilm has always made a name for itself in stills photography, but as of late, uh, it's, it's showing how quickly they have honed in their video capabilities. Their intuitive design and a quick and easy menu system has made uh, the Fujifilm line of cameras super easy to use and is one of the main reasons why we made the switch from Nikon to Fujifilm. For the third key factor, it's a digital mirrorless camera but with an analog feel. If you ever held one of these, and actually used the dials on top that you can control the ISO with one dial, control the uh, shutter speed with another dial, and then the aperture ring on the lens itself. It, it, it's very analog gi <laughs> uh, Key factor number four was the image quality. When it comes to image quality and color, I am still forever drawn back to, to Fuji systems. In the past, we've used Nikon, like I said earlier, Sony, Canon, Panasonic. There's just something about the way Fuji colors make that photo pop. It's like an underlying feeling that you know that that image was shot with the Fuji system. Key factor number five were, were the lenses, actually. Fujifilm has a very good lineup of prime and zoom lenses, enough to keep them extremely uh, competitive with the likes of Nikon, Canon, and Sony. Every lens that I have shot with is, is super fast and is tack sharp. Now the only drawback from their lens lineup is the shortage of third party lenses. And what I mean by that is if you look at Sony or Canon or Nikon, you have the likes of Tamron or Sigma producing third party lenses for those camera systems. Unfortunately, Fujifilm doesn't really have a third party <laughs> lens maker. Um, I did make a video earlier at some point in 2020 uh, that there was a rumor going around that uh, Sigma and Fujifilm are, uh, are potentially going to be partnering up. <laughs> And uh, I'm still holding out hope that that, is, uh, that that will come to fruition, but let's just keep our fingers crossed. And these are the reasons why I shoot Fujifilm. All right, so that wraps it up for today. If you did find this video to be helpful or if you enjoyed it at all, get down there, hit that subscribe button, just <clears throat> smash it. Also, while you're down there, hit that like button. It'll send this video out to whoever else needs to know about Fujifilm camera systems and how awesome they are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and if you haven't already, follow me on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. Links are in the description below. And now as always, if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below. I will respond to each and every one of you. That is an NTLP promise. All right, stay safe out there. Make sure you get out there and get those epic shots. And I'll see you next week. Peace.